And a very good morning to you and welcome to the News at 7. I'm Iberi. We're going to the headlines this morning. Governor Obiano reinstates commitment towards giving people easy access to justice. State government receives more commendations for repositioning education sector. Members of House of Representatives threatening to boycott President Buhari's 2019 budget presentation next week. And a foreign scene this morning, French authorities issue wanted poster for Strasbourg attacker. In details of the news, Governor William Biano has set up the Anambra Law Revision Committee to review the state laws. The committee, headed by Justice Ijem Awami, who has the special advisor to the governor on Lego matters, Barrister Pat Igwebike, as its secretary. Government House correspondent A.G. Kabana filed the report. The committee, which has Pio Osanabo San as the alternate chairman, has Justice Fidelis Anyoku, Barrister Ujumwago, and Barrister Pat Igwebike as members. Other members include Barrister Ifanyo Biako, Professor Solo Ekwenze, Barrister Tena Emekekwe, Barrister Ujumetu, Barrister Okwi Igwewe, and Barrister Linda Chingwoba. The committee was given six months to conclude its activities. The Anambra State Laws was last revised 27 years ago in 1991. Inaugurating the committee, Governor Biano said that his drive was to ensure that the masses have easy access to justice. The governor also gave the committee a mandate to review and make recommendations for soft copies of such laws to enable better appreciation of the law by practitioners and expressed satisfaction with the caliber of people that make up the committee. I was impressed when I went to Boston the University and uh, I was told the United States laws, we can access online and all the stuff. That's where we're headed. We must uh, get a number of laws uh, uh, in soft copy to ease uh, appreciation of the law by the lawyers or judges, as the case may be. And where certain laws are cited, it's very easy to very quickly pull it out and uh, review instead of uh, going to the hard copy, you know. That's an ancient method, you know. So I uh, am very delighted about the, 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 the caliber of people that are in this team. In her speech, the Attorney General of the State and Commissioner for Justice, Barrister Ujumwago, said that Governor Obiano has once again demonstrated his love and respect for the rule of law, noting that a lot of laws have been enacted by the state government but are all in bits and pieces, adding that the committee will strive to bring them together into one document. She noted that the laws should be reviewed at least every 10 years. Your Excellency, being yourself, and uh, thinking well of Indiana brand and trying to bring justice closer to the people and trying to make us live within the contemporary society and trying to make an Ambra state be what it should be because ordinarily laws should be reversed, revised at least every 10 years. Justice Ijem Onwa Mewu, in his remarks, said that setting up the committee is timely and stressed that it will be one of the highlights of the present administration. Justice Onwa Mewu promised to do a thorough and meticulous job to deliver new Anambra State laws that will be second to none anywhere in the world. From the Governor's Lodge, Amobia, AGK Abana, ABS News. It was a test of intellect, smartness, and knowledge of the ever-changing world as the 58th Independent Anniversary Inter-Suburb Schools Debate Championship continued in Orca, capital of Anambra State. Correspondent Ken Nechikuchikudi reports that stakeholders have always called for flexible policies in the education system to meet the needs of the present time. He brings more details. The calm atmosphere at the St. John of God Secondary School, Orca, we suggest to a visitor that it was an intellectual battle among school children. This was confirmed immediately the contest began as the young debaters thrilled the audience with their in-depth knowledge of contemporary issues facing the society. Speaking to the ABS at the debate ground, one of the coordinators, Mr. Oladikbo Ibitoye, noted that the primary aims of the championships were to bring junior secondary school students from different parts of the country together while testing their intellectual ability on contemporary issues. He commended the Anambra State Government for its passionate interest in education. 
the, the way we want to unite them, uniting the students, all, I mean, the class, superb uh, students, all over the profession, we are uniting them uh, with this program. A total of nine states are participating in the championship. One of the sessions at the debate championship on the topic Internet has done more harm than good to the society featured Anambra and Play Two Suburbs. It was a keenly contested debate and students placed their points on present day complex issues. At the end of the debate session, Anambra emerged victorious against Play Two. Speaking to the ABS crew at the end of the debate session, some students, including Joseph Okoli and Charity Giang, noted that they had been greatly exposed by the championship as they would now dialogue better, which is an objective of the program. The edge fellow students to be serious with their study, while a teacher, Solomon Dagog, called for constant review of school curricula and incentives for teachers to meet the contemporary challenge of the society and help improve education. In Oka, it's been Kenechuku Chukwode. For ABS News. Work on the dilapidated Enugwancha Express Road is to be completed by May 2019. The Minister of Power, Works and Housing, Mr. Babatunde Fashala, stated this shortly after inspecting the condition of the road. Ngozi Abilari has details. The Minister explained that construction work on the road has been awarded nine different times but was not funded all this while, assuring that the present administration has provided funds to complete the work. Mr. Fashala said that work will commence on one lane of the road before the other lane and will be completed by May next year. I think the first thing is to also understand the history of this place. This is the fallout of state creation. This is the fallout of this guy. I think Anambra State is, I think, 20, 21 years old. So from that action then, they didn't have a secretariat. And there are still states that don't have secretariats. And they want equality. Understandably so. So for those who are telling you restructuring, these are some of the things that yesterday's restructuring has not resolved. So we are still trying to give them a secretariat. We are trying on the completion of the Federal Secretariat beside the Jerome Udodi Secretariat in Oka, the minister said that the work was delayed due to issues with the 2018 budget and for the fact that the National Assembly was on break for a long time. He said that now that things have returned to normal, work will be facilitated. Meanwhile, work at the Federal Secretariat has entered painting stage. In Oka, I am Ngozi Obileri for ABS News. A priest and four deacons have been ordained by the Mbamele Diocese of the Anglican Communion. Staff reporter Blessing Ijedibia, who was at the event, reports that it took place at the Cathedral Church of St. Michael Umuikua Nam, a number of West Liku government area, and was officiated by the diocesan bishop, Right Reverend Henry Okeke. Her reports. The ordination commenced with the presentation and examination of the candidates, while Bishop Okeke later led them in oath taking, charging them to be shepherds over the flock of Christ, professing the faith in Jesus, and to proclaim the gospel afresh to all generations. The bishop later anointed their foreheads with oil and presented each of them with a copy of the Holy Bible. For the office and the work of a deacon in the Church of God, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The new priest pledged allegiance to Jesus Christ, promising that their loyalty will be total, absolute, and undivided. Do you believe the doctrine of the Christian faith as the Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion has received it? And will you in your ministry expound and teach it? I believe it, and we so do. In a sermon, a visiting priest, Reverend Canon Kelechi Chimara, charged the new priest to abide by the law of God and to preach the total gospel to the total man without reservation. He called on clergy's wives to always be of assistance to the pastoral work of their husbands. <laughs> Some of the new priests, including Reverend Victor Wakume and Christian Chukwemeka, expressed joy for being a priest, 
promising to preach the total gospel of Jesus Christ. The Lord has helped me. He is our Lord Ebenezer. I'm very, very happy. Happy that uh, uh, I thank God because it was just I'm very, very happy. Blessing Ijedibia, ABS News. Moving on to our national stories, members of the House of Representatives have strengthened to boycott session Wednesday next week, meant for the presentation of 2019 appropriation bill by President Muhammad Buhari. The threat was a reaction to some uncomplimentary remarks on them attributed to the Minister of Budget and National Planning, Senator Udo Udoma. The minister was alleged to accuse the legislature of stifling efforts to lay the budget, saying they have not given them a date. But upon resumption of plenary and subsequent reading of a communication from President Buhari, which requested the House to designate Wednesday for the laying of the document, the House erupted in anger against the minister. Members who were livid with the minister said he deliberately lied against them to bring the institution of the legislature to a state disrespect and ridicule and subtly cover up the incompetence of the executive arm. They wondered why an arm that only completed work and approved the budget estimate last week Friday would turn around accused the lawmakers of dereliction of duty. Much as the arguments went, the House, relying on the intervention of the Speaker, Honorable Yakubu Dogara, resolved that should the Minister fail to tender public apology, retracting his alleged statement before Tuesday next week, the House would be forced to take a decision on the matter. And on business news, the Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN, has so far disbursed more than 100 billion naira to support the growth of micro, small, and medium enterprises, as MSMEs, in Nigeria, with another 60 billion naira set aside to specifically fund MSMEs in the agriculture and manufacturing sectors. CBN Governor Godwin Emefile at the annual Bankers' Dinner organized by Chartered Institute of Bankers of Nigeria, CIBN, in Lagos, said, that the Apex Bank recognizes that the greatest challenge confronting the MSMEs and local farmers is access to credit and to unlock the growth potential they must assess funding seamlessly, Emir Fille stated. He explained that the CBN's effort at supporting small-scale farmers and SMEs is based on awareness of, of the critical role they can play in supporting the economic recovery and growth, as well as in creating jobs for millions of Nigerians. He assured that the CBN will in due course take action that will directly bring banking services to the rural communities through licensing of a national microfinance bank to be located in our local government in Nigeria, through which credit can be channeled to rural communities. While exploring ways in partnering with the fiscal authorities on how best to provide farmers and SMEs with the support they need to expand their operations. Well, as part of its social responsibility, a number of broadcasting service Onicha has organized a 2018 Christmas party for residents of Onicha and environs. The party held at office complex Awada was Fawn Field. Staff reporter Odina Kamwolisa completes the story. The party attracted school children and proprietors, parents and dignitaries who were in high spirits as the atmosphere depicts the season. Various schools displayed and showcased their potential in dancing steps and drama. Addressing the children and party makers, the managing director, Nzeuchi Nwora, noted that the station will not relent in its social responsibility of entertaining, informing, and educating the society. Represented by the head of station, ABS Onicha, Mrs. Chingwe Chuka Obunse, said the station will partner with schools to fish out talents, noting that the station allotted time for children programs and called for synergy between the teachers and parents, stressing the need for proper child upbringing while also cautioning against drug abuse. The language we use when the children are there, the way we behave, the way we sit, the way we communicate with people, because children, they are very good imitators. Speaking at the event, the chairman on the occasion, Sanebet Obi, represented by Mr. Daniel Scott, appreciated God for the gift and commended ABS for the initiative. He reminded the children of the need to obey elders. 
contributing the special guest of honor and special assistant to the governor on community liaison, Mr. Nana Nzewi, while praying for a peaceful and prosperous celebration, encourage parents to inculcate Igbo values in the young generations. We declare in the name of Jesus that this Christmas there will be no loss in the name of Jesus. And all of us will have a cause to celebrate. And in 2019, we shall achieve better success in Jesus' name. Various schools took turns to display their talents, even as Santa Claus was at hand to entertain them with gifts. In a speech, the chairperson ABS Party Committee, Mrs. Njide Ezoyejiaku, while applauding the station for keeping faith with her social responsibility, thanked the MDCEO for approving the party. She expressed joy for the unprecedented turnout of people and expressed gratitude to the sponsors for the overwhelming support. The head of commercial service, Mr. Val Ogwejiofo, in his remarks, expressed gratitude to all and sundry for identifying with the establishment and requested for sustained partnership. In their separate speeches, other members of the committee, including Mrs. Ifieze and Frank Ononuju, described the event as a huge success. Cutting of Christmas cake featured at the event. And moving on to the foreign scene this morning, French have authorities issued a wanted poster and are calling for witnesses after a deadly attack at the Strasbourg Christmas market. Police have identified the suspect as Strasbourg born Sheriff Chekat, 29, who was known to intelligence services as a potential security risk. French authorities have appealed to the public to remain vigilant as the suspect is still on the run and not to approach him, but instead call a hotline. Chekhat has been on the run since allegedly spraying gunfire at the city's famous Christmas market on Tuesday, killing two and leaving one person brain dead. A dozen others were injured. French police have circulated a poster of the suspect on Twitter and provided a link to a website where individuals are able to submit information that could assist the investigation. And on sports news, former Super Falcons coach Kadiri Ikana has backed the women's national team to advance from their group, which analysts have described as tough at next year's Women's World Cup in France. FIFA on Saturday conducted the draws for the 24 participating team. Teams at the women's football showcase Nigeria were handed a tough draw with nine-time African champions Falcons in Group A alongside host France, South Korea and 1995 world champions Norway. The Falcons play Norway in their first match on June 8, 2019 and it kind of said the match would determine their faith in the group. Also, FC Robo Queens coach Emmanuel Osaha believes the Falcons can pull a surprise in France by advancing to the round of 16. And that's it on the news at 7. Remember that you can follow news and programs on ABS from any part of the world by logging onto our website, www.absradiotv.com. Like us on Facebook at www.facebook.com forward slash ABS Radio Television and follow us on Twitter and Instagram at ABS Radio TV. And just before we go this morning, a quick reminder of our top stories. Governor Obiano has reinstated commitment towards giving people easy access to justice. State government has received more commendations for repositioning education sector. Members of House of Representatives have threatened to boycott President Buhari's 2019 budget presentation next week. And the foreign scene were brought to you that French authorities have issued wanted poster for strike board attacker. And that's the size of our package this morning. Many thanks for joining the bulletin. Amiberi Ugunna, good morning. And Amber continues shortly. Please stay with us. <laughs>